Don't go around telling people your, what your story is. Everybody has a story. 80% don't care and 20% glad it's you. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? Easy choices, hard life. Hard choices, easy life. The hard choices, what we most fear doing, asking, saying, these are very often exactly what we most need to do. Are you interested in achieving these goals or are you committed? It's not going to be easy when you want to change. It's not easy. If it were in fact easy, everybody would do it. But if you're serious, you'll go all out. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy. Work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself in the situation. Continue to move. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. You will have good days and you'll have bad days, but you will always learn something more or something new and you will learn more overall on bad days than good days. You will learn more about yourself, you'll learn more about relationships, you'll learn about life and principles, and it'll build your character. You don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to beat yourself up over the head. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. If you wake up in the morning and you start having negative thoughts, man, this ain't my day. I woke up on the wrong side of bed. I'm tripping. I just don't feel myself. In the middle of the day, if you feel yourself doing that, stop. Just stop for a second and start going over in your mind everything you have to be grateful for. Not everything you want, everything you already have, because what you have is substantial. You just haven't gone over the list and taken inventory in a long time. But the fact that you can walk, that's a blessing. The fact that you woke up, that's another blessing. The fact that you can see, think, reason that's another blessing the fact that you can go somewhere and get yourself something to eat that's another blessing and i'm just talking to you i don't even know you i could give you 50 things you ought to be grateful for right now i don't even know you start coding your mind with gratitude it'll change everything for you one of the most important lessons in life that you should know is to remember to have an attitude of gratitude of humility understand where the gift comes from it's not mine it's been given to me use what i have use what you have to help others you know on your last day you can't take it with you but you can leave it here one of the things limiting you from your income your impact a world-class life you care too much about what people think about you it is a neurobiological wiring it served us thousands of years ago. We wanted to fit into the crowd because if we left the crowd or our social network, we would die of starvation or we would be eaten by saber-toothed tigers. Now we're in the modern age and we are frightened. We are terrified. Our amygdala goes crazy. Cortisol, the fear hormone, starts to pulse through our system if we leave the crowd. Everyone has an opinion. Why let the opinions of other people deny you from a life that will make history? It's very important that you engage in an ongoing process to develop you. Spend more time on yourself than what you've been spending. Working on yourself, talking to yourself, overcoming the negative conversation, that inner dialogue that's going on all the time, all the time. Even when you don't want it to be there, you can't stop yourself right now from thinking. You can't do it. And so learning how to empower yourself, part of doing that is standing up to yourself. You've got to stand up inside yourself sometimes and say, shut up. I was going to give a presentation and this voice inside of me saying, you can't do this. You don't have everything it takes. I shut up. I'm behind on my bills and you're telling me what I can't do. 
I have got to do it. You'll get scared sometimes. Your mind will go blank on you. Some people you will allow to unnerve you. And you wonder, what's wrong with me? I'm not crazy. That's why you've got to learn to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to stand up inside yourself, working on yourself, watching that inner dialogue. It will determine the quality of your life. Your mind says no. You just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you want to go, the amount of pain involved, the amount of mental pain, of how many times you're gonna have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. There's gonna be more times you do something that you don't wanna do than you are gonna wanna do. And that's your new norm. And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't wanna live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. We have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. You see people who do big things and you automatically say, that guy's so lucky, she's so lucky. You don't know that, you're assuming that. Going to work every day for 20 years and grinding your ass off and then becoming a multimillionaire, that's not luck. That's action and reaction. Quit using the word luck, quit believing in luck and start believing in work. Start believing in results that come from your actions. When that alarm clock goes off, there's at least 50% of the time where you just, that soft little pillow is just caressing your head and you want to stay there. And it takes discipline to go, nope, I'm going to get up out of this bed and I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Everyone in the world has a list of things they think they should do. I should lose weight. I should work out. I should spend more time with my kids. I should work harder. I should make more calls. I should, I should, I should, I should. And then you know what? People don't do their shoulds and they get mad at themselves and they what I call shit all over themselves. They beat themselves up about it. What changes people is when your should becomes a must. When suddenly the thing you said should happen has to happen. That's when human beings change. If you want to be great, you want to be the best mother ever at what you do, you could be misunderstood by everybody because you're going to be so f obsessed and so driven to get there. That's what it takes. It takes every second of your f life. Anybody says balance? Yeah, balance is important for a lot of f people. It is. But if you want to f go to that edge where people do not like you, don't understand you, question everything you f do, you've arrived. When people don't understand you anymore, you're in that spot of obsession and drive. Here's the truth. This is the reality. Nobody's going to believe in you until you've already done it. Nobody's going to come and celebrate with you until you've already done it. The work is going to come before the belief, which means you're going to have to work for a long time by yourself with no applause, with no awards, with nobody telling you good job. And then once you start to build something and people start to see the momentum and they start to see the result and you start doing some things, then you're going to get a little belief. And then what's going to happen is you're going to believe. And then what's going to happen? You're going to go do a little bit more work and a little bit more work. The results are going to come more. More people are going to believe. Nobody can believes in you because you haven't done anything. That's the reality. When you quit, your mind says we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. I'm drowning. I'm miserable. I'm suffering. I'm broken, but I'm not going anywhere. What happens to your mind? It says he's not leaving. So we gotta expand, we gotta grow, we gotta figure this thing out. So then these compartments in your brain, they have to work. And then you start to engage parts of your mind that you never engaged before. When you're in suffer mode and you say, I'm not gonna quit. You're forcing your brain now to operate on a level it's not used to, but then it becomes used to it.